Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. So I just finished the Fallout show that Amazon produced, and I gotta be honest with you, it was better than I thought it was gonna be. I went in with low hopes because it's, you know, it's Amazon producing a video game adaptation for Bethesda, but all of that aside, they made the right choice in not recreating a video game. You know, they took an established universe and wrote a new story with new characters, and you know, that's, that's the right move you should make when you do this sort of adaptation stuff. Like, think of Andor or Rogue One and how well those performed, and they didn't include any of the old characters. There were some references here and there, you know, the big reveal at the end of Rogue One. I think that scene stuck in a lot of minds, but that wasn't the focal point of the movie. You know, those characters weren't the driving factors. It's all new people, and that's what made this so good. We had four characters that we follow around for most of the series. It starts with Lucy the vault dweller from 33, you could compare her to your character from Fallout 3. You know, naive to the world, never left the vault before, didn't even know it was livable outside until at a, you know, disaster strikes. But overall, a good person, you know, wants to help people. Probably acted like you did the first time you played any Fallout game. And then you contrast that to the second perspective character, the ghoul. He's been out there too long. You know, he's kind of cynical to the world. He cares about making money and surviving. He's probably you after you've played the same Fallout game for the 20th time, you know. You're on 1,500 hours. You know everything to expect. It's, it's a grind for you. Now, there's another perspective character, Maximus, who I've seen this clip floating around of him that seems to dissuade people from watching the show. It's him in a suit of power armor, and he is just getting the brakes beaten off of him by the ghoul. You know, cuts a hose off his neck, blasts it on him, sends him flying off in the distance. It looks like Team Rocket just got beat by Pikachu. The reason he's so bad in that suit of armor, the reason the suit of armor is malfunctioning in that way, and frankly, the reason why the ghoul is able to dispatch him so easily all gets addressed in the show. The first two points before that scene even happens. The third one kind of makes sense if you get an idea of who that ghoul is, but even later on in that show, there's a real important reason why he knows his way around that gear. But the final character who we get a perspective on is actually the brother of Lucy. His name is Norm, and he stays behind in the vault. And he has a little, like, sleuth investigative story that he goes down on where he's trying to figure out basically what his vault experiment is, if I can be honest with you. Most of us who played the Fallout games know that every single vault had an experiment that they were going on with it. They were being tested one way or another, and he's started to realize things are weird in his vault, and he wants to know what's going on. With all of these perspectives combined, and again, most of them do interlink now and then. It creates a very fleshed out story that gives you a lot of detail, but it doesn't feel overbearing. There's a fair amount of references, you know, the, hey, you remember this from the game sort of deal? The sound effects are there, but I don't think it's overbearing. You know, it's not this key jangling sort of thing that you might have the expectation of with this adaptation kind of media. Um, on top of that, I've heard people say that it breaks canon, you know, that there's these big revelations that happen that change the course of the events of the games, and for starters, the story isn't even in the games. It's said, I think it's seven years after the events of Fallout 4, maybe a little earlier, maybe later, who's to say? But none of the stuff from the games is affected. There is a bit of a reveal at the end of the series that... I wouldn't say this is new. This is a confirmation of stuff that has been discussed for a long time. The writing's been on the wall, but there just hasn't been any official, hey, this is what happened. And that is revealed in the series. There's theory videos you can find on YouTube that are more than five years old that talk about the exact way the show ends. So that's nothing new. I don't think that was, you know, retconning anything, but hey, that's just me. Uh, one complaint I saw was about Marvel-style dialogue, which sounds like a red flag in my opinion, like you got anything you've thought about came from a YouTuber, but 
They said it was the scene with Maximus and Lucy. They're trapped in a room together, and the conversation gets a little bit forward, you know? And there's something that Maximus says specifically that people said was cringe. And I only took that as, honestly, lore expansive, you know? The Brotherhood of Steel doesn't seem like they're the most forward when it comes to sexual education. There's even a scene when, I think it's when Maximus is first introduced when he's in his barracks. There's a guy just going to town on himself around everyone else. Like, I don't think they're very careful about that sort of education. When you compare that to someone like Lucy, who is incredibly educated on basically anything except the world outside of the vault and the world pre-2077. So I didn't really think of that as off-putting or weird as much as it's just these are two very naive people having a very straightforward conversation. Um, I can't tell you to watch the show or not. I would say it's worth it. It's, what, eight episodes? They're an hour apiece. You could, you could binge it in a day if you really felt like it. I wouldn't blame you. I watched seven episodes in a row, so yeah, go for it. You'll you'll probably like it. If you're a Fallout fan, I think you'll enjoy it. If you're not a Fallout fan, I think it's not going to be too confusing that you don't get what's happening. It explains everything pretty well. There might be some stuff you need to ask a dork about, but what's the other... What really are we watching TV shows and movies for if not to talk about them with our friends? So I hope you like it. I hope the conversations you get out of it are fun and... Yeah, until we get another video game adaptation or until we get season two, y'all try to have a good day.